As I continue to get caught up in the news that I somewhat missed because I was caught up dealing with the two-week end of the Supreme Court term and all the media I had to do, I want to talk about a very important news story and its implications, specifically the decision by a Florida jury to find the school resource officer at the Parkland High School, Scott Peterson, not guilty of failing to protect the students during the Parkland High School school shooting. This is a very big deal for the Second Amendment movement because it just reaffirms and shuts down any suggestion that we are not our own first responders. And that includes teachers and school administrators who are otherwise sitting ducks if you don't allow them to protect themselves the way every other prominent American protects themselves, and that is with firearms. Stay tuned. Let's talk about this not guilty verdict and what it means of Scott Peterson, the school resource officer of Parkland. Hey folks, I'm Mark Smith, host of The Four Box, a diner, proud American gunner, constitutional attorney, member of the U.S. Supreme Court Bar, and author of the brand new best-selling book, Disarmed, What the Ukraine War Teaches Americans About the Right to Bear Arms. Check it out. Also check me out on Twitter, at Four Boxes Diner, if you want to get additional Second Amendment-related information in addition to these videos here. All right. So Scott Peterson was a school resource officer. He was a deputy sheriff in the Broward County Sheriff's Department. He was assigned to the Parkland School on the day that uh, Nicholas Cruz shot up the school, killing 17 people and wounding 17 others. Now, this is a big deal because, as you all remember, a year after the Parkland School shooting, the, the, the state of Florida, and by the way, this was before the state of Florida was governed by Ron DeSantis. This is before that. The state of Florida conducted a full-blown, year-long study that gave rise to what was known as the Parkland Report that said that indeed the only way to ensure students and faculty are safe at these schools is to have armed teachers and armed faculty that are trained and willing to do it, of course. Not everyone has to do it, but someone has to do it because at the end of the day, the people there have skin in the game. And one thing you cannot trust, you cannot trust, is the police presence, including the school resource offices, because a, they may not be there. B, they may need be, be in a different part of the school. C, they might just run away or they might hide outside, which is exactly what was discussed in this major criminal trial involving the SRO of Parkland, Scott Peterson. This is a very unusual trial because as you know from prior videos we've talked about, as a general matter, the model of police officers in America, which is to serve and to protect, is not legally true because of a whole list of reasons, including two Supreme Court cases. One, the 2005 decision of uh, Castle Rock versus Gonzalez, and another case called Deshawnee versus Winnebago from, uh, I think it was 19, uh, 1989 or so. Those two Supreme Court cases and more say that the, the notion that police have a duty to protect you from crime is not true. The only narrow exception to that might be if you're in their custody and then they have a duty to protect you because you're in their custody. That didn't work out that well for Jeffrey Epstein. Side note, but let's let's not digress down that path right now. So what's interesting here is that Scott Peterson was a, a deputy sheriff in Parkland at the Broward County at the Parkland School, assigned to protect the school, and he failed to do so. Now, the fight at this trial was whether or not, or two things, whether or not Scott Peterson actually was a caregiver, and what they meant by the law there, to, to break it down in the simplest form, is if you think about it, if you're responsible as, let's say, a director of a nursing home, you've been hired specifically to protect the residents of that nursing home, so you have a special duty to protect those residents in a way that you wouldn't generally otherwise if you just saw old people on the street, let's say. And their argument was that, that Scott Peterson was effectively a caregiver and thus effectively had a fiduciary duty to the children of the school, and when the Nicholas Crew shooter started to shoot, then, then he, meaning Scott Peterson as the SRO, had a duty to confront or at least try to confront Nicholas Cruz. And even if he could not shoot and stop Nicholas Cruz, the one thing the idea was talked about at trial, he could at least distract or slow down the shooter, giving students time to get away from uh, the psychopath. And because, according to the trial, Scott Peterson stayed outside and did not go toward the gunfire. Now, Peterson's argument, he didn't go through the toward the gunfires. He didn't know where it was coming from. He could not figure that out 
That was his testimony, and that was what he argued. Uh, but again, there was other police officers and people there when they showed up said, well, we knew it was coming from there, and he just simply stayed outside and refused to engage. Now, the, from a Second Amendment perspective, this case really teaches us that you are your own first responder, period, full stop. You simply, under no circumstances, can your working assumption be that the government will be there to protect you. There are so many examples of how this is not true. Every single day, if you read the New York City newspapers, you will see countless examples of people being victimized by criminal thugs of all sorts and the government not able to protect anybody. We see this all across the country. All these mass shootings and these active shooter incidents, you never, even if the police is heroic, which they were heroic uh, in like, you know, down in Texas in the Allen Shopping Mall, the, the police officer was certainly heroic. Uh, the, obviously the police officers in Nashville were heroic and they did their jobs. But even when they do their jobs, they get there too late. And that's not to knock the police, it's just stayed in effect. But anyway, the Scott Peterson trial was very interesting because the state, uh, uh, the, 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 the state attorney, the district attorney, tried to put Scott Peterson in prison, tried to lay blame here. And of course, Scott Peterson's defense lawyers did a very good job here. And one of their big arguments was, hey, look, Nicholas Cruz, the shooter, is to blame for these murders. Why are you blaming my client, Scott Peterson, the SRO? And again, it really does teach us at the end of the day, the bad guy is the guy, you know, doing the bad thing with a firearm. And that's who is to blame. And we know these sorts of things keep occurring because there are too many bad people out there. We can have a separate video about why that's the case, why we have so many more school shootings and other shootings now than we did 30, 40 years ago when guns were even in high schools with people like Justice Scalia used to drive uh, used to ride the subway in his New York City high school with a rifle and no one cared because he was on the rifle team in the New York City high school and we didn't have these kinds of events. Obviously, something has changed with society. It's a bigger conversation than the purposes of this video. The purpose of this video is, again, the fact is that Scott Peterson, who was assigned to protect the school, failed to do so, and then he was charged with the crime of failing to do so and was found not guilty, not guilty. This puts the... To, puts to bed the final nail in the coffin, whatever metaphor you want to use, that we cannot trust police, government will not protect you. And anybody in a gun control debate that says, call 911, you just point out, among other things, that Scott Peterson, who's on the ground at Parkland in Florida, as a police officer, could not protect those kids and did not protect those kids, whether because of a criminal guilt or any reason, it doesn't matter to those 34 people that were shot, 17 were killed. Now, a few other interesting facts about this case. You may know from your Second Amendment discussions, there are two parents that are actively involved in the gun debate arising out of the Parkland situation, one on one side, one on the other side. Specifically, and what's interesting is that of the people that were killed on the second floor of the 1200 building, which is what the debate was. They, he was not charged, Scott Peterson was not charged with any of the deaths associated on the first floor of the 1200 building. They said he didn't have enough time to deal with that. But the children on the second floor of what was known as the 1200 building at the Parkland uh, campus, that uh, he did have an opportunity to intervene and thwart that or deter that, and he failed to do so. What's interesting is one of the children who unfortunately was killed was Metal Pollock. You may know Andrew Pollock. He wrote a book called Why Metal Died. He's become a very big Second Amendment advocate encouraging armed teachers and armed school officials. Um, Andrew Pollock, obviously a, a very serious guy, uh, pro-guns, realizes the importance of protecting uh, people with firearms, and he, his daughter, Metal Pollock, was one of the kids that was, uh, you know, that Scott Peterson was charged with failing to protect. Uh, in contrast, Jamie Gutenberg, uh, who was the daughter of Fred Gutenberg, you probably know uh, Fred Gutenberg. He is actively anti-gun, always seeking more gun control laws, and his daughter, unfortunately, was one of the uh, students that was killed alongside Metal Pollock. And what's interesting is, so here you had the Scott Peterson was charged with deaths of both of these uh, kids and the fathers have gone in different directions. But at the end of the day, they both were blaming Scott Peterson effectively for failing to do his job. And whether he failed to do his job because of some criminality or he simply failed to do his job because he wasn't capable of doing it for any reason, from the purposes of the 34 people shot, it doesn't matter, which goes back to the fundamental point of the Parkland Report and the things that I've talked about in various things, including, I should mention, you know, my book, Duped. 
Don't forget the famous book, Duped, How the Anti-Gun Lobby Exploits the Parkland School Shooting and How Gun Owners Can Fight Back. I wrote this book after the Parkland School Shooting. I know we don't talk a lot about this. It's a very good book, by the way, with some great information, and it's not that thick, as you can see. You may want to check that out. In addition to Disarmed, uh, yes, I seem to write books all the time. Yes, it does appear that way. Nevertheless, um, this is very important for us here because, again, to the extent that Scott Peterson was at least found guilty, there would be an argument from the anti-gunners to say, hey, look, cops have a duty to protect you. If they fail, they become Scott Peterson and go to prison. But that's not what happened. He was found not guilty, not particularly surprised, because I thought the theory the state advanced was, shall we say, tough. It was a tough argument to make. They tried their best, but it wasn't a great argument, because at the end of the day, it, the truth is, guess what? It is the bad guy that's responsible for this. Uh, just two additional points I want to make. One is this is basically the theory they were advancing. This is uh, what the Broward State Attorney Harold Pryor argued. He says, quote, as parents, we have an expectation that armed school resource officers who are under contract, contract to be caregivers to our children will do their jobs when we entrust our children to them and the schools they guard. They have a special role and responsibilities that exceed the role and responsibilities of a police officer. You see, that's how they're trying to distinguish those long-standing laws that say that to serve and protect is a model and not actually the law. Uh, Mr. Pryor goes on to say, to those who have tried to make this a political, I say it's not political to expect someone to do their job. But you know, the truth is, if you watch this channel, The Four Boxes Diner, and you know anything about what's going on, the truth is, even when the police do a good job, even when they show up fast, it's still not enough time to protect the people in those rooms. The only way for the people in those classrooms, in those malls, in those theaters to be able to protect themselves is if they have the firearms there ahead of time before the bad guy shows up because they're the ones with skin in the game. No one cares more about my life than I do. No one cares more about your life and your family's life than you and your family. To depend upon any stranger, even a heroic stranger, to come in and save your life with a firearm, when you refuse to carry that firearm or you could not carry a firearm, you got to be very careful here because, again, um, you know, I'm asking someone with a gun to show up after the fact. Often that's too long, and the only thing they can do to help me out is nothing, which means they simply show up with a big, big piece of chalk and draw a line around my body. I consider that to be suboptimal. I think the better approach and the better outcome is that uh, I help stop the bad guy from killing me, uh, my family, and my friends and colleagues and other people that are present uh, who are innocent from any scums that to try to kill me or anyone around me. Now, the only thing I also want to mention is kind of interesting, just to go back to the point that we really cannot trust anyone else to defend ourselves other than us. Bob Jarvis, who's a professor at law, a law school professor at Nova Southeastern University, uh, he gave a very nice interview, interview where he talks about some of this. He says that <clears throat> obviously if a case, meaning, the, and this did not happen, but if Scott Peterson were to have lost his trial, there will be some police officers or cops who say they don't want this kind of liability and then we're going to have to have a real question if cops are really expected to go in and confront active shooters, whether or not that's true. Uh, then he goes on and is quoted as saying, and I'll put a link to this down below, we're going to have to give these police officers body armor. We're going to have to ha give them sufficient firepower that they stand a real chance against an active shooter. And the question is, do we want to militarize the police in that way? So here you have a conversation by someone talking about the role of police. And while I support hardening the schools, locking the doors, single point of entry, entry and also having armed guards there, none of this is, as I see it, uh, is a full-blown substitute for allowing administrators and school teachers, and again, it may not be the teachers, it may have to be the administrators, the principals, maybe the gym teachers, I don't know, but certainly there, maybe the janitorial staff, whatever it is, uh, the best way to protect these schools is the same thing that the Parkland report concluded after studying what happened at Parkland and saying that indeed armed teachers and the like protect us the most. So to summarize, the point of the Scott Peterson school resource officer, not guilty verdict after the Parkland school shooting is even though a cop had one job, he had one job to protect the kids and the staff at Parkland and he failed to do it. This is not unusual. So to the extent anyone says that you should trust the police, call 911, you don't need a gun, call the cops, trust government, you just remind them of how Scott Peterson, who was tasked with this responsibility, was found not guilty after a full-blown trial. The police will not be there in time. 
They have no legal duty to protect you. Nothing has changed those Supreme Court cases, including the Scott Peterson case. Never forget this. Remind everyone all the time that we are our own first responder. And don't kid yourself. Any alternative is suboptimal and simply silly. Now, I understand that the people that don't want us to have guns, they love guns for themselves. They protect themselves with guns, of course. But they don't want you to be protected with guns because you're a serf and a subject and you're not a superstar and you're not an elite on their level. At least that's what they think. All right, folks, hope you learned a little bit something here today about the not guilty verdict of Scott Peterson and what it means for our rights. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to the Four Boxes Diner, please do so. Check me out on Twitter at Four Boxes Diner, and we'll see you again soon here at the Four Boxes Diner. Orders up. Table 2A.